So Ronaldo coming back, and now we know it's Manchester United. In your view, wh wh where's, your, where's your head with it, Simon? Was it proactive or reactive by United here? I don't know. There's an argument to be said. They're like Messi and Ronaldo, like rats desinking, that's deserting financially sinking ships. Funny how they're coming out of it, Spain and Italy when the finances are coming out of Spain and Italy. That could be one argument. Or the other argument is two Rats. elite... Two, yeah, Messi um, and Ronaldo. Yeah, but it's one argument. Or it's two elite footballers plying their trade in these desperate places like PSG where they must have been wanting to play all their career for Messi. Ronaldo coming back to United. I'm with Graham on the idea that somehow they're getting a superpower back. They're getting Ronaldo back. They're getting a player back that once upon a time at United was a young boy that was outstanding. And they're still getting an outstanding footballer back. When I see United and I see players like Mason Greenwood yesterday who are absolutely electric, it makes me think about the transaction that's gone on here. It's playing to the gallery for, from the Glazers' point of view. Look at us. Look what we've done for you guys. We've brought something back that no one said we could. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is going to take him. Of course he's going to take him and, and bring him into the fold. If he's making statements like that the player's going to start as a matter of course and people have to get used to it, well, I'm, I don't know about that because players well, should be, be picked on him, merit. They're going to be paying him 560 Well, yeah, that's, that's the owner's choice. But ultimately, they, you know, they played Sanchez £500,000 a week. They didn't play him. And, you know, you play the players on their merit. And I realise that Ronaldo is an exception. But it is a fascinating transfer window because obviously we're seeing these stellar Hollywood signings. But I'm with Graham. When, we, when it was breaking on Friday, I said to, to, to you, I'm not sure he'll go to City. I think there's a twist in the tale here mm. because City normally lay claim very quick to players they're going to sign. And there was no claims being laid by Man City he was going there. Graham's assertion was also based upon the fact that he didn't feel, put aside the, the prowess of the player, he didn't feel that Ronaldo would compromise his legacy in Manchester by joining Manchester City over... over, over uh, It wasn't even at the time Man United in the mix, but joined Man City full stop. Now, you bring him into Manchester United and you say, does he detract? Well, probably not. Is he is he the Ronaldo that when you close your eyes and think of in the past? No, he's not. But is he going to do a job for United at a time when really and truly this is the season that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's got to win something? Yeah. Because if he doesn't win something, it's very difficult... I don't make a case for him at any time, as you know. But it's going to be even more difficult for all of those people that disagree with my view on Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. I think it's unfair. You have to get to a point, if United don't win something this season, that you are now making a case for him not being there any longer. I think that case should have been made about two years ago, but that's a different discussion. Mm. Ronaldo coming into the Premier League gives it marketing stardust. And it's very interesting that football is going great guns in these transactions because I think it's also a byproduct of almost coming out of some sort of recession where businesses that are well healed, like Manchester United and Man City, say, right, we need to sprinkle some real aggressive thinking about what makes us look good and what can give us the opportunities to achieve. I I'm fascinated to see him come back, but I'm not all sort of full of enthusiasm about players that are 36 years of age coming back at a certain stage in their career yeah. because I think it's a little bit more show of a substance in and, my view and, and you think it detracts from the fact that look at this young rising star Mason Green who's, who's well, yeah, coming through I mean, and not for the first time did it yesterday I mean I think he was I mean I I just think he's an outstanding footballer I think it beggars belief that he's not part of the national team squad and I know Wally yeah. Gunnar makes a case for him developing his career at United and being able to do that. Well, Simon, this I'm, boy, so, glad, this boy's I'm outstanding. so glad you said that. Boy's outstanding. Because not, not for the first time, as I said there, was Greenwood to the rescue uh, for Manchester United yesterday at Wolves. Y you know, and yet, uh, Southgate, as you rightly say, doesn't include him in his squad. So does his early season form make Southgate's England snub even more bizarre? This was Gareth. He is in our thoughts. I've spoken with him and with his club. Um, he's a player we really like. You know, he's got every possibility to be a top England player we're all very conscious that we make that progression at the right time he is um, just breaking into the team at Manchester United with a lot of responsibility that's a big thing for a young player to deal with and we want to get that progression with our seniors uh, as well as we possibly can so that we get the best possible player at the end so we're all aligned on that Mason, the club, his family, us. We feel at the moment the best thing for him after these first few games is, is he stays with his club. But he's very much a player that we like on his performances at the moment. He would warrant being in the squad, absolutely. Mm. Now, I, I get what you're saying there. I get what you're saying. But if he is in your thoughts that much, get him in. Well, to my mind, that's yeah, absolutely. I mean, you're looking at players that like Jude Bellingham that are significantly younger. You know, Bukaya Sako uh, at... 
uh, Arsenal and obviously Jaden Sancho that's not really getting that much of a starting lineup opportunity at Manchester United, albeit th there was one yesterday. But you look at it and say, um, unless we're missing something, I thought the best players played for the country. And I'm finding it difficult to look at Mason Greenwood. I know there was a situation a year ago where he didn't play, or didn't behave himself very well with Phil Foden when they were away, but that's a year ago. Yeah. This boy is an outstanding player. Mm. I mean, he is out. He is outstanding. He's as good as anything that's around there right now. And he is as he. You know, this boy will be as good as Kylian Mbappe. He is an outstanding player. What? And as, and for as him good to as Mbappe. for him to be excluded from the England team, there must be something we're missing. Maybe we didn't get the memo about best players being called up or not being called up, as the case may be. And maybe there's a reason behind it that we're not being told. But quite frankly, it beggars belief why a player like this, with this level of electricity and excitement, two feet goes either way. Ask Danny Murphy what he thinks of him. He's a, he's a Liverpool supporter, yeah, yeah, biased yeah. beyond all realms. Yeah. And you look at those things and, and you get the feedback. This boy is outstanding. So to, to not to be included in the England team, there must be something that we're missing in the makeup. You know, for, for, for Southgate to say, in conjunction with his family, in conjunction with his club, mm. we think it's best that he develop then we're missing something. Right. I can't right. join the dots up backwards to think why a player like him wouldn't want to play for his country. And you think to a large extent, because United have committed themselves to, to paying someone like Ronaldo what amounts to two and a quarter million a month, yeah. they've made a rod for their own back. Well, well, look, I mean, if Ronaldo goes in there and s smashes it, then the argument's going to be turned on its head, isn't it? True. But the fact is, is that you've got players like Greenwood that I think are absolutely outstanding. And and what I saw from yesterday, okay, I think the goalkeeper did, left a lot to be desired. But look at the explosive nature of this boy. Yeah. Look at the pace. Look at the ability to go either way. And he is a top top player. And perhaps there's an argument to be said: playing alongside Ronaldo, training Ronaldo of with every day is going to enhance him. And pop, Ronaldo's a consummate professional, isn't he? Well, Simon, it could well be that Southgate has struck something of a deal with United to use him sparingly. There is always that. We don't know exactly the minutiae Why? of what they talk about, but it could well be that's where we're Why? at. You know, he missed. He was included in the squad for the um, Euros. Had to drop out for an injury. He was in. Yeah. But why now? He was injured. Why now? Yeah. Are we not seeing this player form part yeah. of the England team? Okay, these qualifiers are probably gimmies anyway. But I'm not talking about whether they're gimmies or not. I'm talking mm. about whether the best players get picked for their countries. Yeah. And Greenwood, to me, at this moment in time, is an outstanding player. And represents everything that a modern f forward player should look like. Sure, he's an outstanding player, Jim. You know, and I can't be more specific. Oh, than absolutely! That. So I'm disappointed not to see him in there. Yeah, I mean, England fans listening this morning, surely you want Greenwood uh, to to be playing for your country. Is Gareth wrong not to include him at the moment, or do you think there's more to it? As I say, there is a suggestion that Southgate and United have a deal that they use him sparingly. Oh eight seven one seven double two double three double four. Uh, two bits of news you understand. We understand here, and of course, it's rumbling towards uh, the deadline tomorrow night. Everton have submitted uh, a bid from Maitland Niles. Arsenal are considering a bid from Everton to take Mait uh, Ainsley Maitland Niles on loan as far as we understand here. And Leicester, I've been told this morning, stepping up their interest in Adamola Lookman. So those two just under under the surface at the moment, but they might well come to the surface as the day goes on. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Thursday morning, 10 till 1. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.